Hi there, I'm Nutrix, and today we're looking into GeoShred Control and GeoShred Studio. Now, if you know GeoShred, you know that it's a, I would say, a strings slash guitar type of controller for the iPad. It doesn't mean that you have to play the guitar, but you can play. First of all, it was made to recreate the type of playback you could do on a guitar. That's why it's called Shred. You can shred guitar riffs with it. The logic is that it's different in the tactile way of playing with it, and it needs a multi-touch interface to be able to play with all your fingers, or at least more than two. So now it has been released as a plugin or standalone. You have the two version on the desktop. It's pretty cool because you can now you can now integrate it into your other productions. But the question is, my computer, my Mac, doesn't have a multi-touch interface. To play with it on screen so the logic of using it is kind of a hard thing because i mean i can control it by a keyboard i mean you can controller it works like that it works without any problem but i won't have the same multi-touch interface that i would have to create the type of sound that sounds like guitar shredding for example you can also use an mpe controller then again it's still not the way it was bought or designed for. So what they have, which is really cool, it's a free software. Anybody can download it. It's GeoShred Control, and that's a controller basically that has the same interface, the multi, the multi-screen. The multi touch interface, but the sound does not come out of this because that's just the controller. Then what it means is this can also control any MIDI software that can receive MIDI. You can use this as a controller so you can shred other sounds. That's what's interesting here. It opens up the thing to the, it opens up the option to different things. We'll talk about how to set it up and then we'll talk about what you can do with it. So there's actually many different sections of this video. First, how to set it up so it can talk between the iPad and the Mac, so you can have the information going between the two of them. Then there's a tour of what this does. Uh, basically, it looks almost the same as the software or as the GeoShred Complete, if you want. You can update the GeoShred Control to complete Anytime you just go into the different menu and you choose a sound that is not there, it sends you to the store. You can buy it and get the whole thing if you want to. And it becomes autonomous by itself. Or if you can control the two or you connect the two together, it, it controls what's happening in the computer and the GeoShred Studio. So it's basically a choice of how you want to make it. And this graphic should, if everything's con connected the right way, should be the same in the two. So when you change here, you actually it's a whole remote control of what's happening in GeoShred Studio. So let's just look at first, if you want this to work between the two, you have to set up, in my case, I'm setting up a wireless connection between the two. You could do wire if you want, you can go with a USB connector and then make it so that the two see each other. But I like to try it out as a wireless right now, and it works pretty well. So what you have to do first, you have to go into your Mac. You have to go into the audio and MIDI configuration app as the, that is in the tutorial or that is in the utility uh, folder. And then you go into this section here, you're going to add a Bluetooth um, connection for MIDI. So this little thing here at the top, when you click on it, you type it a name and you make it public. So this iPad M1 is the connection between this one. And then if I go into this one, I'm going to click here, go into MIDI. And in MIDI, I'm going to go on the Bluetooth, this one here, and you connect it to the Mac OS, which is that one over there. So when this is connected, 
you can now go back here and say, this one's going to be sending. So you click connect, click on send. You do the same logic in the other one, this one here, you go into the same corner, you click MIDI, and you say connect, and you say receive. And now this one receives, this one sends, and if you play, and if I click here, and I decide to go, I don't know, uh, this one here, it changes the two of them. I'm going to close that window here, and close this one. So of course, if you don't play well, it sounds bizarre. What it does is that you have many places to play. There's a different way to look at how the notes can be played. And there's a section you can play. In this case, this is the volume, the intensity, and then the pitch. So this is the monophonic. You hear it right away. And if I change here, I'm actually changing up there all this at the same time. So you hear that this one does, does not have effect, the other one had effect. You're changing the direction of the bow. So there's a lot of control. It means that you need to relearn how to do some of the things that you're used to because you now have more control over it. And every time you change instrument, there's also a change in some of the features. I'm oh, sorry, I gotta change here first. Okay, we have this one. Let's go look into the model and effects. You have the performance window where you control a lot of what's happening. You have an arpeggiator or not, different type of control for the speed keyboard, the scale, a custom scale, the um, strumming, do you want the keyboard section? That's what I have right now. You want strumming, you can enable strumming and the chords on the side. So you can decide exactly and you can have the controls, but at the bottom, you can choose different ways of saying these. So I'm going to disable that for now. And you have for each of these, you have control over the different effects. So you get the source, the instrument you're playing, this one, the cello, then you've got an echo, multi-tap echo, you have a reverb, and we have an amp and a cab. Now, for each of them, you can go in and load different settings. There's kind of a, a couple of options here. You have the flat response, the type of, type of emulation of the cab it does, and the tone stacking, bass power, suite, or bypass. And then you can go in, let's say I'm going to go bass. You can go in and play with that if you need to. And you want to have a American boutique type of sound. If you want more ex expert sound, go expert. In this case, there's nothing in this one, but uh, let's go back to the reverb. For example, there's three options, damping, room size, and level. Go expert. There's, there's like nothing else. Uh, echo, multi-tap. Echo 2, Echo 3, and Echo. So there's four echoes and go expert. You have control over each of them separately. You have more control here. Actually, you have all the details here. And it's even more obvious when you go into the cello where you've got basic stuff like vibrato, the size of the ensemble of, of violin playing, of cello playing in this case. Uh, tuning variation of the ensemble, the tremolo of it, the pressure you're going to use, the expression, and you go expert, you got a lot of way here to change it. Okay? So if you want to go into editing, this is really powerful. And then this is what you buy on top of buying the Surface. I mean, software here is free, but you need this to really get the most out of the movement and how to control the studio version but when you get into this here you basically you buy these sounds these presets 
if you pick one you don't have, like I, I don't have uh, the Geo Violin, if you click on it, it's, oh, you know, you can go into the store, and in the store you can say, well, I can listen to it. Let's say I'm going to go with uh, lead voices. Now, this is also something you need to learn. If you want to play this, you need to understand how a guitarist is playing. My my son is a guitarist, so understand that the palm mute is you're basically muting the strings with your fingers. Easily, you can start just going. Okay, I can, I can maybe find something. But you need to learn how to. It's easy to be off if you don't know how to play. This is pretty cool. I have the whole thing about the Nenda. This is... You're buying also all these sounds. That sounds really... It sounds really nice.
Let's say I would like to have some distortion to this. I want to have more control. I want to have something that sounds more like electric guitar. Edit. Plus. Oh, yeah. I can say, oh, I want that. Here's all the other ones you can load in. Multi-tap, liquid stereo, four band, geeky Q, a filter from a Moog, Moog. G viola da, 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 da. there's there's a bunch of that saw synth okay there's a lot of them maybe i don't have all of them if i click on let's say uh, this one no oh, it's there i have it okay i'm going to get rid of the chorus get rid of the reverb and i'm going to add the mud face <laughs> It's, it's it's actually pretty amazing what you can do with it. It's just very easily you can start making stuff that I would not be able to play on my keyboard. But at the same time, like anything that you learn, I'm going to have to learn to play differently. So there's, I'm actually hitting a little bit beside the note. So it's always like, like I'm drunk when I play, which is not the case. I'm telling you, it's not the case. Um, so it's just, um, it's cool, but like anything else, when you learn new performance tool, you need to learn and get used to how you place your finger on how you control it. But this is pretty cool. Now, let's break it down. You have the controller that can send to anything. By default, I'm sending it to GeoShred, but it could be any other software of, of you know, synthesizer that sends it. You have controls on the way it's going to work. GeoShred Studio, you have also, the models that you can control, modify, add, and edit. So if you can tweak the sound to make it your own, even the guitar here, if you play with it, you can decide what type of string you have, where the bridge is, the body. You can control a lot of it so it sounds more like you want. But at the same time, a lot of this information here is not obvious for me because I'm not a guitar player. So basically... I would say play with it, but you can understand that this is where the pick is between the bridge and the middle, the string bar stiffness to the bar, the, the bridge. Um, so this, I don't really understand what it's going to make as a change on the sound, but at the same time, let's explore, let's try it out, let's see what it does. And it's pretty, pretty deep if you want to, and it's pretty immediate if you don't want to go deep you just pick the sound and you play it's just uh it's well made it's really i like the way this is connected and the fact that this is free and i don't have an mpe controller so this can be playing like an mpe controller because if you go into the midi output one of the ways of playing is to be playing like an mpe controller on channel on, on channel mode three. If you want to explore that, write it down. If you have any question on this, if you want me to test other things with it, 
write down in the comments and I'll see what I can do to answer your questions. That's it. Stay safe, make more music, and see you soon. <laughs>